views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show that's coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Wow. Hey, everyone. Welcome. I want to welcome you. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Welcome to Transformation Talk Radio. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. For those of you that are listening through Transformation Talk Radio, I want to thank you all for tuning us in, turning us on. And for those of you that somehow are picking us up through one of our apps, whether it be Spreaker or I don't even know them all, I want to welcome you. It doesn't matter how you're listening. You are important to us. And thank you for all of your support. In the years, 13 of them, yeah, creeping up. It's just like a big creeping up on us right there. I want to give a shout out to all of you out there. We are going to do something special. Um, Many of us, our hearts were were so, um, so heartbroken by the passing of Dr. Wayne Dyer. And so next week, uh, you're going to see, we're going to be pulling up some of the shows that we've done with him. Uh, some of them were early on when we were cross busting your way to an awesome life and we're going to bring them back and pop them in and uh, do a special dedication uh, for him. He has contributed to so many of us living life full out, as we like to say here on the show. And a shout out to Mr. Benny. Benny, are you all bumper shooted out? Uh, actually, I did not attend. I was busy with the boys doing other items this weekend, but I heard it was a great time as long as you stayed dry. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Yeah, it dried and warm, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, the the little lady actually went down and saw Zed on Sunday and said it was a pretty good show. So that was uh, nice. good to hear. There you go. See, well, there you go. Yep. Um, actually, I had a couple of people. One of them on our team went down for the entire deal. Wow, cool. Stamina. I don't know how you do that. Yeah, it's. I got to give a shout out to Maria. Stamina. Uh, way to go, girl. Stamina. Yeah. Way way to show us how to be a Pacific Northwesterner. Pacific Northwesterner. But now if you're a WBLQ, this is like the weekend, and maybe maybe those guys can fill us in. But now if you're on our other flagship station, you're thinking, what are those people talking about? We had the largest beach celebration that we've ever had because it's a big deal in westerly Rhode Island. And that's what I love about having, you know, two flagship networks that we work with, and both of them know how to celebrate. And that's amazing. Well, Mr. Benny, I'll tell you what. I did not go to the bumper shoot thing. I just cannot bear uh, taking myself out there and doing that uh, because I'm looking at my little tomatoes that are really trying to turn red, and they're saying, please, get warm. Please, show me the sun. Priorities. Four tomatoes. Yeah, you should put That's a little like a little uh, dome around them and you know, get a little more well, heat for them or something. I, Can you do that? Maybe I should have. I should have put a little plastic or something on yeah. there, right? But you know we a live in a greenhouse, right? It needs a little greenhouse. Little greenhouse. Yeah. Little, we do live in a beautiful place, and yep. you know leaves are going to fall when they fall. And it's not just here in the Pacific Northwest. I mean, my buddies over there in De- Delaware, Maryland, or there in Virginia are like, "What up? The trees are turning." So those of you that made plans to drive through New England and watch all the trees turn, you better move that deal up. Well. We've got a great show for all of you today. And, you know, what is it when we decide we're going to take our story to the forefront? And we're going to tell folks about, you know, some of the things in life that we get to let go of again. Letting go again. A birth mother's tale of adoption, reunion, separation, and growth. I love this. See, if if we could really tell the letting go story the way Kimberly has done this in this book. If we can truly finish the story, because a lot of the letting go business 
it takes it's it's like the front end it says when you go through your closets and you let go of the clothes you don't wear that's where it stops it stops but that's not where uh, Kimberly Smythe is taking us a birth mother's tale of adoption reunion separation and growth see normally this could stop at the letting go part but what does it mean when we say letting go again and again and again and again I don't know where we read that letting go, we had to do it like one time. But now we get to talk with her about her journey over time, whether it's in Hawaii or whether it is working with her children that call her mom today or whether it is a journey that is beyond, beyond adoption, reunion, separation, and growth. Because if you took a look at this journey, you'd be able to look at this and apply them to all areas of your life. That's what today's show is about. Kimberly, welcome to the show. It's great to have you here. Thank you, Dr. Pat. What a great um, introduction. I appreciate it. So letting go again and again and again and again. Was I right with that? Or is it just one time you let go? (laughs) That actually is very well said. Um, Yeah, it's a constant... um, it's a constant journey of letting go of all the voices and the negativities that we have allowed into our lives. Mm. So I think um, everybody can take a gander at the story and find some similarities, and if not their own life, then in lives of people they know. So, mm. yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting because I have I have two mothers, and I grew up with two mothers. And and it's interesting when I when I was reading the book and I was reading about some of the language and this idea, this birth mother, right? Mm-hmm. This mm-hmm. notion of a birth mother. And I really I was I I really didn't think about it until I was reading your book. And I thought, well, wow, I do I wow, I say that. My birth mother, but then what's this other mother? Uh, right? What what yeah. is the other mother? Do we call what do we call the other mother? Uh, and for most of my life, it was mom for both of them. But every story is different. And I wanted to ask you about, you know, the the greatest obstacle, the one that you could think about, like in this moment, that one that you had to overcome just to get here today as the mm-hmm. author as the birth month, so forth and so on. What, what do you think the greatest one was? The greatest obstacle, I would say, gosh, there's so many. Um, <laughs> probably, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I would say probably the lie that I told at the very beginning because um, I was a, you know 16 when I became pregnant and I really was convinced that I was the worst person ever, that I'd done it all wrong, and I would pay for my sins. And I made up a big old lie about how I became pregnant. Um, And finding, you know, understanding through my life how that lie affected everyone around me was Mm -hmm. a really big one for me to get to to the bottom of and find forgiveness around. You know, I want to talk about this for for a little bit because I think it's so important in the world we live in today. And it's one of the messages that I really think from your book. There are a lot of messages in this book, by the way. Uh, and I really do believe that, you know, what you've outlined here in your journey could 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 be a model for many of us in the way we live our lives and the, the lives we tell ourselves. And I wanted to, to really talk with you about this because – you know, in the world we live in today, we are confronted with whether or not we have the courage, each of us has the courage to really speak our truth, to really take our story to the forefront. You know, was there, what was the aha moment for you in knowing that you had to make a, an emotional and a spiritual shift in your life around this? Well, for me, um, unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess, I really hit bottom. I um, was in a relationship that I had no idea how to, um, I did, had no idea how to reach my daughter. And, um, you know, after, gosh, how many years was it? Probably 13 years. Um, the reality of where we were hit me hard. And um, 
yeah, I, 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 I took a real big, scary moment in my life for me to crawl out of the back of my closet, literally, and find help, look for help, because I tried to do, just like I tried to do everything in my life, tried to do it on my own, um, in my head, not really reading books, but not really being able to um, get to the practical tool part and um, of how I had to finally unwind all of the things that had transpired. So, mm-hmm. yeah, unfortunately, I had to get there. So, hopefully, you know, people reading this book won't won't go that far. <laughs> yeah, I want to ask you. I want to ask you this um, uh, about your journey. Twenty six plus years, or twenty six years in in the beautiful state of Hawaii, and so for many people, you know, we could easily blow by that fact about your journey. But you know, it's not something that that I think we can blow by because I think for those of us that never thought in a million years, I know for me that I would relate to, you know, the islands or to the culture. I'm really struck by, you know, my life today and how I'm surrounded by the culture. And if you came into my house right now, you'd see four large frame prints of a local artist uh, from, you know, Oahu. But how did, how did, that culture affect you? Well, um, when I first moved there when I was 12, Mm -hmm. uh, it was a tough thing for me to figure out because I had never been so immersed in a culture with so many different um, ethnic backgrounds. So it was kind of a struggle at first. And um, as I grew older and I actually married a man, Park Hawaiian, and um, getting to know his family and getting to know other people that were born and raised or raised or, you know, people that have adopted the culture um, taught me was this great big heart and allowing around that, the, the idea of ohana or family. And I just, I love that. And, um, yeah, it's a big part of who I am. Even my, um, my husband and I just recently sold our, our company, but before that, I mean, our, our employees were our family, and everybody would agree with that, I think, because um, I just believe that um, family is a bigger idea than what we in the West tend to um, think of it as. We have this very narrow idea of it, that living in Hawaii for so many years, it was, you know, my friends were my family, my um, kids' friends were family, and um, and my daughter grew up in Hawaii, and so when I was Reaching out to her, I had ho- hoped that she would have embraced that idea, that open idea of family. So, yeah, um, mm-hmm. it, it's a great place to have grown up. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk about the book. We're going to talk about the journey, Letting Go Again, A Birth Mother's Tale of Adoption, Reunion, Separation, and Growth. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk about what does this mean to look at this idea of letting go and then opening up to receive. How do these two work together and how does this work for Kimberly? We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Tim Darter. And I'm Steve Kramer. Join us on Spirit Fire Radio. Discover how to add the mechanics of meditation to your day. And watch yourself connect in a whole new way. Find the amazing moments in life's routines that often pass us by. Add to your awareness with Spirit Fire Radio. Tune in each Wednesday at 9 a.m. for your weekly guide to practical mindfulness. And to learn more, visit www.spiritfireradio.com. My dream is to end homelessness. My passion is living a green life. My dream is to end poverty. My passion is volunteering. My passion is making a difference. My dream is to cure Lyme disease. My passion is rebuilding communities. My passion is helping those in need. My passion is caring for the elderly. My dream is to find a cure for cancer. My dream is to leave a better world for my children. 
We all have that special passion, that lifelong dream that drives us to live our lives with meaning and to create a better world. No matter what drives you, we can all make an impact. Dr. Pat Basili is helping others make their dreams come true so we can all help make our world a better world. To learn more about how Dr. Pat is building a community of sharing hope, strength, funds, knowledge, and information, visit abetterworldcrowdfunding.com today. That's abetterworldcrowdfunding.com. Do you want to transform your life's trauma and challenges into the gift that your life was meant to be? It's time for you to take control of your soul journey to heal, grow, and shine. Manifest your destiny with Wendy Wolf, soul transformer, energy, and psychic healer. To start your soul journey, contact Wendy at HealGrowShine.com or email Wendy at Wendy at WendyRWolf.com and start your adventure today. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. Before we jump ahead here, I want to make sure you all have the website where you can find out more about the book, more about Kimberly. And I'm sending them to, I'm sending, going to send everybody to lettinggoagain.com. How's that work for you, Kim? Lettinggoagain.com. Is that good? That's perfect. (laughs) Um, You know, we started to talk a little bit about, you know, the the culture that you grew up with. And the reason that that's important is because, you know, they're, you know, the foundation that you formed, you know, many people wouldn't understand what the foundation name is about and what the influences are about. But this, as I said before, is about a cycle of things. At least when I read it, it's about a cycle. You know, when we say letting go, we say letting go as if nothing will fill that space right mm. you know but there's this is kind of like a couple of different parts to the conversation isn't there there's the letting go and then i said before the break opening to receive and here's the question you know when you when you made a choice right to let go did you have any idea that there would be an opening to receive again mm Gosh, that's a great question. Um, you know, letting go the first time was uh, <laughs> uh, a huge part of my life. And um, I think when I set out to find my daughter and um, I wanted to find out if she was okay and how her life, I didn't know her story. And so I thought, well, maybe if I find out that she's okay, that that little part of me that really still was holding me back in life where Mm -hmm. I couldn't really feel the intense joy and happiness that I knew I wanted in my life, I Mm -hmm. thought, well, maybe that would open up something for me. And going through a difficult relationship with her um, and finally realizing that um, I needed to get help, like I said before, and through that journey of, um, you know, going to counseling, going to spiritual, you know, teachers and whatnot, I I found that the only place that you can find healing is within yourself. And that's been the biggest lesson for me in this whole journey is that um, the place that I thought was the last place that I could find peace in my life with, is with the decisions I made as a young kid. Mm-hmm. And finding the path to that has been an opening for me to mm-hmm. um, find a healing around the story of being a birth mother because it's not an easy story and it, um, mm-hmm. it's a story that millions of women have and very few of us want to talk about it. And yeah. um, 
I think it's important to talk about the, the hard things in life. I think it's important yeah. to step up and say, you know what, this has been a really hard journey in so many ways, but right. it has been a journey towards myself and self-healing mm-hmm. that um, I'm grateful for. Do you think we've become more understanding, Kim, about, you know, what it means to have a child and then, you know, in our hearts, we think we're doing the best thing for them and we take that step and we decide we're not it for you. Can you talk about what that decision was like for you? And do you think that, you know, uh, that we have become more accepting in, in today's society? Hmm. Um. For me, uh, I was, you know, when you're a young kid, and one of the great things yep. about being a young kid is is exploring and mm-hmm. and and not following the rules. It's exhilarating, and then you find the rules are, are you know around you, and you you realize that you broke every single one of them, and that you're a horrible <laughs> person, right? So um, I was yep. convinced I was the most flawed person, and there was no way that I could be a great mother to my daughter. I had no mm-hmm. tools. I had nothing. And um, so I I believed I was the great giver. I thought I was doing the best thing that anyone could ever do for another person, as well as, um, you know, do what I thought was best for the people I loved. I loved the father. I didn't think... <laughs> Him being a father at, 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 at a sophomore year in high school would be helpful for his life journey. And mm-hmm. my parents, I didn't want them to be the parents of the kid that got in trouble, you know. And so I tell this, I look the story of the lie of how I I had no idea who, how, what happened, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought I was protecting everyone, especially myself, because I right. became the victim and nobody could get me there, you know. Right. Um, and so... Going from the great giver in my mind to understanding later on how I had robbed so many people of the opportunity to know my daughter and um, have her in their life um, was was really difficult for me. And I took on that baggage and I wore it around me like a big old cloak and um, I became what I thought I was this less than person and it's really easy in our society for women to take on that role and not believe that we're worthy because you know it's 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 a tough road for a lot of women and the choices they make um you know and follow themselves they are meant to in their lives um so uh yeah um allowing for me was allowing the love that I am to show Mm -hmm. and to let go of what was preventing me to be from being that person. Yeah. You know, it just didn't seem right that I could, my favorite thing in my life was to be a mother and then to tell the world, Oh, by the way, this is also part of my life. And it was just hard for me to Mm. walk that walk for a really long time. I mean, I have to tell you, as I was reading this, it was really gut-wrenching for me because the way that you've written this was so beautifully done in a very painful way. And I I don't know if you understand what I mean. It's because of the way that you wrote the book and your story and your journey that you invited us and allowed us to see the most vulnerable part of what happens with a, a, a young woman that is in the same exact situation that you were in and not knowing how to talk about it, who to talk about it with, trying to protect everybody around you uh, and then bear the burden alone of the pain. I mean, that's what I, I mean, when you were describing sitting on a curb and crying, I was just, I was right there with you. Uh, And yet, it, your heart was in the place of love for these other folks. That had to seem so paradoxical and confusing for you. It was. I mean, the only way I think I could ever um, have given her away was to be convinced I was the great giver and this mm-hmm. great thing I was doing. And mm-hmm. shortly after she was gone, reality started, you know, <laughs> yeah. barging into my life and yeah. and 
finding some peace around what I had done and not knowing her story and, you know, um, going through life. And, of course, um, the new stories are always the not-so-great stories about adoption and and knowing that um, I trusted people that I didn't even know. It was really, uh, it was a difficult thing to live through. So, yeah, I was really looking forward to at least knowing her story um, and mm-hmm. at least knowing that she was okay. Um, and I thought that would give me some solace. And um, mm. it got real complicated shortly after I met her. So, <laughs> Yeah. Well, we're going to talk about that when we come back. You know, what is it that gives us strength, you know, to be able to open our hearts and, you know, have a perspective that may not be our own? What does compassion truly mean? Well, that's what I think that Kim has written about, Letting Go Again, A Birth Mother's Tale of Adoption, Reunion, Separation, and Growth. For you all, you can get a copy of the book. You can read about it. You can go to lettinggoagain.com. When we come back, we're going to talk about what this means to move through this place of letting go and then connecting again. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with the Dr. Pat Show. A morning filled with dynamic, inspirational music, spirituality, and uplifting messages by T.J. Woodward. Come and connect with community conversations and awaken your senses. Awakened Living Sundays with T.J. Woodward. Join T.J. every Sunday in the San Francisco Bay Area Chapel at Fort Mason and live streaming online, 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Pacific Time. To learn more and access the live stream, visit www.awakenedlivingsf.org. Transformation Talk Radio is dedicated to the education and awareness of Lyme disease. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Lyme Talk Radio. I'm Dr. Pat, joined here by Dr. Nusheen Darvish. Dr. Pat Basili and Dr. Nusheen Darvish will be bringing the most innovative, groundbreaking information, research, treatment innovations, and stories from those it affects every day. I'm so excited to be talking about this. We have so much to share. Dr. Darvish and I are planning to do is connect the dots. People suffering with all sorts of chronic diseases, it's time. It is time for them to transform. Tune into Lyme Talk Radio and and help keep our mission strong. For the loyal listeners out there that have been listening to this incredible show on Lyme disease, we are not going to let you down. We're going to come through stronger and enrich the platform for Lyme disease awareness through Lyme Talk Radio. The message will continue. The conversations will become stronger. And the healing epic. Clairvoyance, a gift few have. And even fewer match the powers of one of America's best. Dr. Linda Salvin. Dr. Linda's uncanny ability drills to the core of your issues to bring you quick and accurate answers and predictions. In more than two decades, Dr. Linda has helped over 75,000 people. On national radio, by phone, in person. When you need answers, Dr. Linda makes it clear. Book your time with this legendary seer now. Click on lindasalvin.com or call 888-509-1077. Calling all dreamers. Are you living your dream life? Actualize your possibilities with Life Coaching Radio and your host, Deb Stetzer. If you're feeling stuck in a rut, Deb is here to help you turn your dreams into a reality. Life Coaching Radio. Dream it, live it, be it. To learn more about Deb, visit www.mylifecoach.us. If you're one of the millions of Americans suffering from anxiety, you probably know how powerless and out of control this emotion can make you feel. This is why it is so important to remember that anxiety is created by your mind, which means that you can learn to use your mind to uncreate it. Hello, my name is Dr. Friedman Schaub. My award-winning book, The Fear and Anxiety Solution, provides you with a step-by-step breakthrough process to understand and resolve the root causes of your anxiety and build a solid foundation of confidence and inner peace. If you are ready to take your power back, visit thefearandanxietysolution.com. That's thefearandanxietysolution.com or call 
866-903-6463. That's 866-903-MIND. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Um, Before we start to talk again with Kim about letting go again, if you want to find out more, as I said before, go to the website, lettinggoagain.com. And, you know, you're going to find that you're going to find lots of information here. Um, We're also going to talk about the foundation, um, as well as other interviews that uh, Kim has done and and how she is taking this journey out into the world and, and what that means for so many people and understanding what this journey is like. Um, and uh, I want to just, Kim, for a minute, just take a minute. What, what else would you like to share with folks? Um, what else would I like to do? I think um, we put a lot on ourselves from, you know, times when we made choices that were weren't so mm-hmm. wise, especially when we're young, and I think it's really important for us to a responsibility actually to be the best people that we can be. And going back to that young kid that I was, and how I had <laughs> lopped on, you know, so much on her, and and the decisions she made and how she made them, and to really go back to her and just see what her true intentions were, and and to. Um, her real heart and she mm-hmm. wasn't a bad person and it, it's I, I i celebrate her now you know and I, I really think we do the best we know how when we we do it right so yeah i think it's yeah. important to find self-love in the middle of something i never thought i could ever get there so it's, it's possible <laughs> well also you're giving us a different perspective on birth mothers and we were talking about this during the break you know, and I had asked a question of whether or not our society has changed. Uh, and and I think you and I have come to a, sort of an agreement that while, you know, while we are, we're kind of more open to the idea of adoption, very little is even said about the journey of a birth mother. But you're writing about it. You're talking about it and talking about it so beautifully. And as as I said to you, I mean... You know, I'm reading parts of this book and my heart is just hurting about, you know, what this journey is like. Are there many people that actually get to the reunion stage? And what was that? Look at me calling it a stage. Well, are there many folks, many women that get to to be in that reunion energy and space? And what was that like for you? Well, um, let's see, I met my daughter in 95, I think it Mm -hmm. was, and, you know, the daytime talk shows were real popular, and I would always DVR the adoption ones, because I was, I was mystified by how anybody could show that, that, uh, you know, that part of their lives, and I was always, like, very impressed that people could actually be out there saying what they were saying, and I always wondered, you know, if that went any further from then and because I did worry about my daughter I wondered how she was if she how she was she happy and healthy like any mother would you know be concerned about her child and so when she was a, a, a approaching 18 I sent to the state um, my request to find out where she was and they sent back saying that they could forward a letter to her once they found her they took a few months to even find her so um, I sent her a letter and it was forwarded to her in college and we started you know she wrote me back and it was I was thrilled I was really thrilled you know knowing her real name and just it was awesome for me um, but that <laughs> that that healthy child turned quickly and she was ill and had to leave college so um, she went back home and I didn't know what was going on with her she had very serious um, uh, things going on with her it, her her um, she was having hallucinations and whatnot and it was mm-hmm. it was very disconcerting for me and I didn't hear anything about what was going on so 
I took a plane and showed up on her island and said, "Please come see me. I need to see you. <laughs> I need to see you if you if you know if you want to, please come." Mm-hmm. And she and her parents showed up and um they were very sweet to me. They brought pictures, they told stories about, you know, different things that had gone on in her life and um it was lovely and they just found out what was wrong with her and um uh you know, I'm sure there was <laughs> lots of relief with everyone because it was something that was definitely fixable. She had a tumor on her adrenal gland and mm-hmm. um you know, it just so happened that a specialist was in town and she was, you know, went to Honolulu and had the surgery and I was I asked if I could be there and they said yes, so I showed up and I I really felt like okay, these people they're 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 open to me being there, you know, I was very interesting um meeting someone for the second time basically yeah. um, her parents and then sharing something so intimate it was quite interesting but um they were very nice to me so i appreciated it and then yeah so that's what happened <laughs> mhm mm-hmm. and you know for for that part of the journey right I mean, there is, you know, this this willingness on everyone's part to surrender to healing. So can we talk about healing for a moment? Because I, I don't, you know, when I read that, you know, and listening to you talk about it, there's a moment for the opportunity of to he, for a healing to happen or a resentment to happen. I, I hate mm. to be so black and white about it, but, you know, sometimes that's where, where life is. And, you know, do you find it extraordinary that folks all came together with their hearts first in that scenario, in that case? Uh, I was tremendously uh, relieved. Mm-hmm. I really was. Um, I uh, I was honored to have been allowed to be in that space. Um, mm-hmm. I felt very awkward in it. Um, it's a very odd feeling to be with virtual strangers knowing that... Um, in different circumstances, this, my daughter and I would been in different situations. You know, <laughs> it's very odd, um, but happy to have. You know, I asked. I kept just saying, "Do you want me?" And she kept saying yes. So I kept showing up, and um, yeah. And then a year and a half later, her mom passes away, and I'm at her mom's funeral, and uh, there again, I'm sta- standing in this uh, amongst family and friends and feeling like an alien from an outer space because I barely knew these people that, you know, I I met there at her mother's funeral. So, um, yeah, I kind of jumped into a bunch of things because I wanted her to know that I was there for her. And, um, yeah, it was, it was different. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that I think the book is called Letting Go Again. It's not called Letting Go. It's called Letting Go Again. Uh, and you and I were kind of you, talking about this when we started the conversation about letting go and letting go and letting go and letting go. Because, you know, aren't you on this very volatile ground sometimes as a birth mother, right, where you're not really sure how these things are going to go? You know, you're not really sure if people are going to say, yeah, yeah, Kim. Yes, mm-hmm. this is what yeah. this is great. This is what we'll do. I mean, did you have uh, you know? I mean, did you have any idea that you were going to be able to connect, reconnect, and what has this been like? Most people would look at look at this as a giant roller coaster ride, and <laughs> I just wonder. I, I mean, not not in a good way. I mean, if you like yeah. roller coasters, maybe. <laughs> but if you don't, not so good, right? Yeah, it's like it's like uh, you know somebody that d- can't even fathom skydiving, and all of a sudden you get pushed out of a plane with a parachute. Um, <laughs> and so I wanted to ask you about that. I mean, you were walking on a pathway of the unknown. I, at least from my point of view, most of the time, right? I was. Um, you know, after her mom passed away, I had a feeling it was going to be a lot more difficult because with her mom's blessings, I felt like we had an opportunity to get to know each other in whatever, you know, fashion that that ever evolved to, but um, 
I don't know, there's something, uh, just seeing her grieving over her mother and my uncle died, uh, you know, about the same age and, and seeing my cousins and the struggle they've gone through and that loss in their life um, and me um, being her uh, natural mother um, but not having a real standing in her life. I wasn't ever, um, you know, I, I think I just I just kept saying she's going to be in college for four years yeah. and then she's going to go off to her life and I have yeah. only so much time. And yeah. if not with me having a relationship, maybe she could have a relationship with one of my sisters or my brothers or, or one of my children. You know, I just, I don't know. I always struggled with who I was in the world and I just yeah. maybe... Um, was trying to give her something she really wasn't in need of. Um, you know, you you yeah. do what you only know from your own perspective, correct? So um, I think she was curious about all these people she was related to, but she really didn't put too much energy into it, and I should have probably taken notice earlier than I did. Mm-hmm. Well, we're going to talk about that when we come back. You know, what is this journey like? You know, when when is letting go the only road that you can take? And what does that mean for all parties involved? That's why the book is called Letting Go Again. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. What if there was no right or wrong way to be a great parent? Join Access Consciousness facilitator Glenna Rice as she and Dr. Pat invite you to be the questionable parents you truly are and empower you to know and give the awareness required to create ease and joy with your children. Join Dr. Pat and Glenna as they focus on parenting for the modern family. Tune in every month to the Dr. Pat Show on air and online at TransformationTalkRadio.com. Are you ready to thread your life with intuition? Intuit Apparel can help you do just that. This is not just about a piece of clothing. This is about a movement, an awakening, and staying centered in life. Your life. Intuitive and host of the radio show, Get Into It, Lynn Brown, was given this image with the intention of a clothing line designed to represent the essence of life itself. Visit IntuitApparel.com now and wear your intuition with pride. We Carry the Light with host Dr. Susan Allison is the show that inspires you to find the light within and shine your light in the world. You'll hear from guests who model how to be the highest, brightest, most evolved, fulfilled, and conscious humans possible. Tune in each Thursday, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com and let Dr. Susan help you discover that you carry the unique light that only you can shine. Can you keep your lifestyle in retirement? It's a question people often wonder about. Ask Ameriprise Financial Advisor Jeff Packman about the new Confident Retirement Approach. You and Jeff can break down retirement planning step-by-step to get the real answers you need. Call Jeff Packman Financial Advisor today at 425-453-0272. Office is located at 601 108th Avenue Northeast, Suite 1800, Bellevue, Washington, 98004. The Confident Retirement Approach is not a guarantee of future financial results. Investment and advisory products and services are made available through Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, a registered investment advisor. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. Let the transition begin. Tune in to the hit show, Majestic Insights Radio, Success for Life's Transitions, with host Carrie Keith. Carrie is a gifted intuitive coach, healer, and teacher who will lead you through her empowering techniques of ancient wisdom and awareness so you can live your happiest, healthiest, and most vibrant life. Let Carrie teach you the tools of transformation that will help you experience success for all of life's transitions. To learn more about Carrie, visit www.majesticinsights.com.
Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. And it's, you know, I, you know, Kim and I were talking about letting go again, the book, and, you know, what does it mean to tell this story? Um, and to tell a story from a birth mother's point of view, what does it mean? Well, what it means is, you know, we get to help many, many women out there, millions of them that have been in a very similar situation or maybe in a similar situation today and have a conversation about this and and what it means. And then beyond all of that, you know, to think about uh, what what Kim is doing now in helping others understand what this journey should be like or could be like or, or even to muster up the courage. Um, and Kim, thank you for doing that. I mean, I know you set up a foundation, so can we just take a minute to talk about that for a sec here? Sure, I'd love to. Um, my foundation is uh, called the Hanai Foundation, and I started it um, when I decided to publish. I decided uh, I'd like to give back. So all my uh, proceeds from the book go to the foundation, and the foundation will funnel money to like-minded people, people that believe that uh, nurturing and self-awareness are huge needs in our society. And that's where it started, but now it's blossomed into this, idea of building a center so I, I'm recent, I'm acquiring a piece of land where I live and I'm going to build a center for people to gather and um, form relationships and community and um, you know um, take off their, sep- their their badges of separation because I really don't believe that's how we're supposed to live our lives I think we have everybody has something to offer and um yeah, so that's what I'm working on right now. Well, thank you for doing that. Thank you so very much. Um, you know, the story again ends or, or doesn't end, but is a is an ongoing journey of uh, receiving and letting go, receiving and letting go, receiving and letting go. Uh, and that's why I guess the book is called Letting Go Again. <laughs> uh, and even in this moment, this is something that you've had to do or you you decided to do is open up become vulnerable knowing that letting go again may may be an option and uh, you know i think it's important to have that conversation of what that what that's like for you and what it's what it was like to let go again Mm, yeah and so thank you so much for having me on because i do believe once again it's important to, to tell the hard stories and i'll tell you what I have been so honored by telling my story and having people feel safe telling their stories to me, things that I had no idea that they've had in their past. Um, I've heard abortion stories. I've heard adoption stories. I've heard all different kinds of stories. And um, the allowing that this book has given to even to the natural father and his family, whom I'm very good friends with, and You know, I gave them the book, and it just kind of opened doors for them to have conversation where there wasn't really a a place before. And I strongly um, recommend people to uh, jump off the cliff because, (laughs) you know, because it's scary at the very beginning, but it it has come back to me tenfold. And um, I hope one day that my daughter and I will have a successful relationship, and I will always be open for that um but the gift that this um story has given back to me has Mm -hmm. um, as scary as it was um i am so grateful well and yes i mean this is really part of the journey of letting go isn't it you know it is hard i believe sometimes for us when we're letting go with love you know, there's letting go with love, and then there are other forms of letting go. Exactly. Sure. You know what I'm saying? We can, we mm-hmm. not enough, they, there's not enough hours in the week that I do radio to go through all of those. But there is <laughs> conversation about letting go with love because that's really the place where you are coming from and are coming from, isn't it? Yes. And and once again, looking back at myself, at a, you know, I was barely 17 when I gave birth, and I really knew I was not capable of being a good mother to my daughter and I wanted my daughter to have the very best life and that's the choice I made at the time and um, she loves her family and um, 
and she's a great person, and she's grown, she's got kids of her own now, and and I'm so grateful that I know her husband and his family and everyone, and, um, you know, it, sometimes you don't get to be a permanent um, person in someone's life, and that's just life, um, and accepting mm-hmm. that and, and, and loving her from afar and um, is, is all I could you know, what I had to do, you know, you have to find that place of peace, even in loss. And um, it's not easy to um, be separated from her, um, and that's her choice, not mine, but um, it's life. You know, you can't force people to like you. (laughs) No, no. But, you know, one of the things that I'm really struck by is, is I'm reading the book, the many, many opportunities and occurrences of healing that has happened you know, broader than, you know, the conversation you and I are having here today. I mean, the door was open to heal so many different things. Uh, yeah. And that's the sense I get from it. And, you know, I mean, the healing continues, doesn't it? It does. It does. It, it, um, yeah, I mean, every time you think you've, you've, you've released everything, there's another little crumb that comes up and says, oh, what about this? <laughs> and it is it's an ongoing process to I really do believe we're supposed to be happy I, I really think that happiness is our, our God given <laughs> way that we're yeah. supposed to be I really do I think creator looks at us and, and all the misery that we we, we log on to our <laughs> lives and say what in the world are you doing yeah, that's you right. know, I really think it is, it is once again our responsibility to find happiness in our lives and, and and grow as human beings and um yeah because it it helps in every relationship that you're in and you know your family um Mm. you want to be your best self yeah well thank you for harder to get there than others (laughs) well it is but i'll tell you i mean you know your story and you know what you've done to bring the story to the forefront you know, the courage it took and the vulnerability is not unnoticed by me. It is, I am so appreciative that you have been able to come forth to share a story that so many women resonate with, the millions of women that were in the same circle and are in the same circumstance that you are in to really understand what this journey is about. And that's really, you know, the gift that you're sharing of being able to endure and live a a life and, you know, go on is so important because for so many women, their life does not go on. It is a tough journey, this feeling of being alone. And thank you for shining a light so that people that get a hold of this and read your book and understand the journey know that they are not alone. And I have one last question. What's your personal message, Kim? And thank you for joining me here today. Oh, I believe we're all love. I think, you know, we, that sounds kind of silly sometimes, but at the the crux of everything, I think that, once again, we're supposed to be, find happiness and peace in our hearts and share our hearts with one another. And especially as women, um, I think there's so much power coming ahead with us in the future if we band together rather than try to separate or, you know, and bring down one another so i think oh, women are are magical beings and we just need to shed all the things that told us we are not and mm-hmm. um yeah i think i think good things are on their way wow thank you so very much thank you thank you thank you for those of you out there if you want to find out more you want to get your copy of the book you know you can definitely go to uh kim's website lettinggoagain.com Uh, book is available pretty much anywhere Uh, and thank you Kim for so much we're going to take a short break we'll be right back 